passages back to James chapter 1. I'll begin reading at verse 12 and reading through the 18th chapter. Our 18th verse. <laughs> James 1, 12 to 18. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brother. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Trials are from God. Temptations are not. That's the difference. Every trial may be a temptation. A trial from God which Satan is using to be a temptation for you. But in this verse, the man who perseveres under trial, trial is not uncommon, it is not unnatural, it is not a hindrance to your faith. It doesn't say, blessed is the man who never has a trial. Neither does it say, blessed is the person whose trials are really light. It says, by the power of God, the one who endures, and perseveres. And since I've been your pastor since the beginning of 76 with a big brain, I know a lot of you people. And I know the trials that you live with. And I know the trials that you have gone through. And I want you to know you have my greatest respect not because you are so strong, but because the work of God in your life is so perfect, so powerful, so protective, so guiding you and leading. Don't waste your trials. They are in your and my life because God has a purpose in them. Never think that God is trying to fix what the devil has screwed up in your life. That's a false teaching. All trials are in your life. So you know God, His power, His protection, His wisdom, 
He's for you. He's not against you. What I really appreciate, what I really am thankful for, that when you go through trials, understand your children are watching you. They are listening to you. They are observing how you react. How you respond to things in your life that if you could choose, you would not have it in your life. Persevere does not mean you try to duck out of them. Persevere does not mean you ignore them. Persevere means you live with them and you speak of God's power, God's purpose, God's will, God's working in my life. It's amazing that when people come through trials and they look back at them, they will say frequently, that was good for me. When I look back at those days, those were some of the days of my life that I knew God was with me and protecting me. You cannot persevere under trial unless you and I are engrafted into Christ. The result of belonging to Christ, he's living in you by his word and by his spirit, is that you will persevere. Paul says in Galatians 2.20, it is not I who live, it's Christ living in me. Jesus, well, he says here, uh, because when he has stood the test, now don't think, if I'm strong enough, this is God will never let you go. I fail. Not anybody sitting in this church is, is perfect. But you and I have Christ living in us. And that's why we stood the test. What does Jesus say to Peter? Satan desires to have you. You're going to go through a terrific trial. But I have prayed for you. And when you come back, because when Christ prays for you, you and I fall into sin, we come back. Come to me, I'll give you rest. We come back, know that it is Christ who has kept us all along. He will receive the crown of life. Now, you boys don't think that's a real crown, okay? The crown of life is a symbol of your eternal life which you have. And if you look back or right now in your trial, you should be able to see clearly, I have eternal life. Because I'm not rebelling against God. I still worship Him. I, I still pray to Him. I still trust Him. 
trials reveal if you are of eternal life. Because you will not abandon God in them or through them. Blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For yours is the kingdom of heaven. Next verse, Jim. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. You got it? If you don't have any money in your pocket, you cannot give some money to somebody in need. If you don't have love in your heart, you cannot love anybody. You cannot give what you do not have. God can not tempt anyone because God is not evil. God is not wicked. God is not sinister. God is holy. God is righteous. God is perfect. God is pure. Therefore, God cannot tempt anyone. You hear it. I hear people say to me, well, God made me this way. Really? God made man upright in his image. Our father Adam and our mother Eve fell. They poisoned every one of their children. Now every one of the children of Adam and Eve, and that's everybody here and everybody listening, is a man, woman, child who is evil. We'll get into that deeper right away. I'm going to go back now to God. There's an interesting story in 1 Kings 22. 19 to 23. I'm going to summarize it for you. Ahab is king of Israel. And God is on the throne, and around the throne are the hosts of angels. And God says to the angels, Who of you can tempt Ahab to go to Ramoth Gilead, where he will be killed. And then it, it says, well, one angel says this, the other says that, and finally one angel says, I know. I will put a lying spirit into the prophets that Ahab listens to. Remember, Ahab is a worshiper of Baal. And these angels say, we will fill the prophets of Baal with lies, and then Ahab will be deceived. And God says, you will do it, and you will succeed. Why couldn't God 
do it himself. Because God does not tempt. He cannot be tempted by evil. I can. You can. Everybody can. But not God. I don't know how many of you know that song. We used to sing it in school. Yield not to temptation. You know that one? I probably sang it all key. And then the next line says, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Remember that? And I used to sing that, and I used to scratch my head about that, because I thought... Is, is that where sin starts when I yield? Got an answer for that? There are two kinds of temptation. One temptation comes from outside of us. The devil comes and, you know, I always was told he whispers in our ear. I think he speaks in our brain. But that is a temptation that comes from outside. Like the temptations of Jesus. The Spirit, Matthew 4, 1, the Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Those temptations came from Satan. Why don't you just turn these stones into bread? You're hungry. You haven't eaten for 40 days and none. Why don't you climb up on the temple and prove to everybody that you are the Son of God and you can jump down? And you won't get hurt because God protects you by his angels. Or why don't you just bow down to me and then I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. Did Jesus almost sin? Was it close? You know the answer. Jesus says in John 14, 30, Satan has no claim over me. I believe you know there are temptations that don't bother you at all. Not in the sense that you go, you're going to do them. They don't bother you. You're not tempted by them or anything. You can ask me to join you some night to get drunk. It won't bother me one lick. I would say, ooh, wow. I have no desire. Such stupidity. The sin, the temptations that come from outside of you are temptations which don't really bother you much, I hope. But there is another kind of temptation that we call internal. And let's go to the next verse, Jim, if that's okay with you. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. Jesus talks about this when he says in Mark 7, 21 and 22, For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, Envy, slander, pride, foolishness. 
those temptations <clears throat> that come out of the sinfulness of my heart are sin. The temptations that come from outside of us and have no effect on us are not. Jesus did not sin when he was being tempted. Jesus couldn't even be tempted, really. But you and I know temptation. We know there are desires in your and my heart that we want to be fulfilled. Temptation is an enticement. If you are a fisherman, you buy these really cool lures, right? And they're really attractive to fish. And you dangle it, and you wiggle it, and you hope the fish is going to bite. And Mother Fish says to her little kids, don't bite those lures. They'll kill you. And little fish, he's swimming around, and here's this lure, and he says, well, Mom says, I'm not allowed to bite that thing. But in the enticement, in his own evil desire, he makes a 360-degree turn and comes past it again. It's really attractive. Because a preacher told me once, when I was a young person, he said, you know what? Sin would not be a problem if it wasn't so much fun. Temptation is the devil's work. Not only his, it's mine. My evil desires in my heart wanting to be expressed, wanting to be satisfied. And so, temptation, there's something attractive. And then, there's deceit. That's not so bad. I know people do a lot worse things than this. And just one time, and I'm not being controlled by it. I've got it all under control. <laughs> and then you get preoccupied with it. And you keep thinking about it, and then you figure out a way to get it to work. And then you subject yourself to sin. And then you get desperate, and you fulfill it. Isn't that how it works? Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. And we all know that. No sin can give you life. Next verse, please. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers. Satan wants to tell you in our own sinful nature, totally depraved, wants to tell us there is joy out there that you should really be satisfying yourself with. There's more out there than just living in obedience to God. What is that old Coke commercial? Pepsi commercial? You want to go around once in life? Are you young enough to remember that? That 
That's the sin. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Every gift that comes out of our wicked hearts is not good, not perfect. A good and perfect gift completely satisfies the recipient. It accomplishes the intent of the giver. And what are the gifts? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Romans 12, the gift of serving, of teaching, of encouraging, of leading, of contributing. 1 Corinthians 12, the gift of wisdom, of understanding, of faith, distinguishing between right and wrong. 1 Peter 4, 10, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. You're all sitting here breathing, right? We have the gift of lungs, we have the gift of air, of oxygen. You have the gift of food and clothing and shelter and children, all kinds of things. Temptation, our inner self and Satan, they want us to be dissatisfied with that. Who does not change like shifting shadows? God is not good God today, bad God tomorrow. His purpose stands. And the last verse, Jim. He chose us to give us birth through the word of truth. And God chose you, he's for you. His plans and his purposes are going to be fulfilled. That we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. First fruits was the first of the crop belonging to Christ. James saw the generation he was preaching to right after the ascension of Christ is the first fruits. The next generation, the next generation, the next generation. That's how you see your children, I think. They're going to be the next generation and their children are going to, your children are going to teach their children. That's why we need strong teaching. And so that is what James is teaching, and this is how that fits in with our preparatory service. Not a one of us is perfect. Being chosen by God does not eliminate temptation. Being chosen by God gives you the Holy Spirit and Christ praying for you. And so you have this wonderful message of the gospel. Jesus Christ is the second Adam. He's come from God to cleanse us of all of our sins. And so all the temptations that we have, and when you fall, don't despair. You have Christ. Amen. Our Father, what a beautiful <coughs> word you give us. May you give us help. May you give us strength. And may you, Father, keep us in your care through the trials and temptations of this life. In Jesus' name. Amen.